Okay. We said it. 3i Atlas. When we got more stories, when more things were coming, we would discuss it. Well, more things are coming on the channel. Nobody knows what the hell it is. Nobody, people are guessing, people are theorizing. Nobody really knows. NASA said, well, we know which way it's going. We have an idea. We have a trajectory of where it's going. Well, they don't even know. They were wrong. And that's kind of the story today. There's a few things about 3i Atlas and what indeed is potentially going on with it. For those un unaware with, of this story, there's something that has been traveling towards us. And Harvard's Avi Loeb does not believe that it's just a comet. He thinks there's something else potentially NHI, um, potentially could be in the way that it's moving. It's moving very different. Uh, I was watching Weaponize with Jeremy Corbell and George Knapp, and they had quoted Avi Loeb and saying something along the lines of make sure you make all your vacation plans before the end of October. Well, we're getting close to the end of October here. Will this be anything indeed, or it'll just be one of those things that just flew by. It was nothing. Uh, I lean that way, but I don't know. I'm not sure, but here's the, here's the story. Skywatcher signal posting that tracking three I Atlas active maneuvering confirmed the interstellar visitor three I Atlas isn't following the path that NASA predicted. It's accelerating towards a hidden perihelion behind the sun, a million kilometer deviation growing wider by the hour. You see the pictures there. There's more here. On October 21st, 2025, independent trackers comparing live sky data with JPL's official horizons predictions noted a clear mismatch. JPL listed 3i Atlas at RA 13 hours, 46 minutes, 57.51 seconds. Observed data placed it elsewhere. RA 13 hours, 47 minutes, 54.3 seconds. That's 15.4 arc minute offset, roughly 1.1 million kilometers sideways. The outdated orbital data always makes an object appear behind its real position, but this one appeared ahead. That means the object isn't being pulled. It's pushing. There's no way to explain that without active thrust, outgassing, asymmetry, or something even stranger. 19 hours later, another positional atlas came in and the discrepancy had grown. By late October 21st, the divergence rate was roughly 0.23 arc minutes per hour, translating to a lateral velocity of nearly four kilometers a second. Then there's the brightness issue. JPL predicted an apparent magnitude near 14.8, but actual readings show it fainter near 15.1, about 26% dimmer than expected for an object confirmed by JWST to be losing around 25 kilograms of water every second, one of the most active comets ever observed, yet it's concealing its light. Cross checks with nearby reference points like SPICA and C2025 R2 Swan confirmed this isn't a sensory glitch. Those sources appear perfectly circular, standard stellar symmetry. 3i Atlas didn't. Its glow formed geometric patterns, green outer edges, blue core, pink directional glow, yellow white center. The chlorination matches Keck Observatory's spectral analysis from August. Each one of these elements appeared isolated into defined geometric zones consistent with controlled plasma behavior. On October 20th, NASCA's LASCO C3 Solar Telescope briefly recorded 3i Atlas showing a cross-like plasma geometry before vanishing from successive frames. Then it reappeared before disappearing again. Seven days to perihelion on October 29, 2025, 3i Atlas passes directly behind the sun, invisible from Earth, unobservable during its most critical maneuver window. It's the ideal point for a course correction or something more deliberate. For now, the object is off course by over 1 million kilometers, dimming against expectation, emitting geometric light structure, and breaking orbital predictions. Add it all up, it starts to feel intentional. Simulations modeling its trajectory, showing it's skipping expected intermediate state, and if its path is being recomputed in real time, not governed by known forces, almost like a system adjusting itself with a larger algorithm, something aware of its own parameters. Skeptics will call it noise or the edge of error correction in deep space tracking. But what if it isn't? What if this is the first detectable hint of directed intelligence, a body navigating both gravity and computation simultaneously? The next test comes on November 3rd, when 3i Atlas reemerges from behind the sun.
If the offset persists or widens again, it confirms active course adjustment, not a coincidence. There's like, and here's a picture of General 3i Atlas where it is, on the sun. Um, so again, I'll tell you, life has been moving at 175 miles per hour for me lately. But one of the ways that I'm able to chill out, unwind is cornbread hemp's CPD gummies. I mean, I really have been able to chill out, relax with these gummies. They're formulated to work with your body, not against it. I, I'm not a spring chicken, but I care about maintaining my physical and mental wellness. I've been trying to get myself uh, healthy. And Cornbread Hemp CBD gummies, they're a huge part of my wellness plan. They really make me relax. Cornbread Hemp CBD gummies, they're made to make you feel better. It doesn't matter if it's stress, it's discomfort, or you just need to chill out, relax. They use the best part of the hemp plant, which is the flower, for the purest and most potent CBD. All products are third-party lab tested and USDA organic to ensure safety and purity. So, right now, DTE listeners can save 30% off of their first order. You got to head on over to cornbreadhemp.com slash DTE. Use the code DTE at checkout. It's cornbreadhemp.com slash DTE. Use the code DTE. I promise you, you will thank me. Some pretty big updates there. I mean, look, it's 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 fascinating to say the least. So it looks like these were the updates that we're getting in October. And then as they say at the end of the article there, it's November or the post rather, November 3rd is really when we're going to get some more information once it pops back out from behind the sun. What I find fascinating is the idea of, well, well look, these things that are happening, this seems kind of deliberate. It seems like, like the, the push um, is that has it's indeed being accelerated. This always jumps back to what I talk about when it comes to all these things that have been seen in the sky in general, right? Like the things that have... the there's two ways to look at this is what I've been if you want to go down this road right the first is and as I've said I've said this many times over the things that we see in the sky and the things that maybe most people who are watching this channel believe right that there's something out there in general whatever it might be whatever these things are that are flying near the nuclear stuff whatever whatever these unidentified objects, the UAPs, UFOs, whatever they are, um, I have said that in my mind, I would say that if it's anything, it's interdimensional stuff, it's the bending of time and space, and it's technology that we can't even fathom. I brought that up when we did the UAP Tuesday this week, and my friend John, who's on the show, is not it does not have it does not dive into this in the way that that we all do here and he couldn't put his mind around the interdimensional things because him that's too sci-fi but when you look at quantum physics and all those things to me that makes more sense to me than things that are coming and traveling from different planets and this topic we're talking about here with 3i atlas to me is kind of proof of that right we've been tracking this thing for quite a bit now we've been aware of it for quite a bit now so it's not like things are just zipping back and forth it's like okay if this is something that's moving extremely fast the next update we're getting for it is in november and that still is pretty fast for the thing how it's moving now the counter to that is we also agree at least a lot of us agree i don't say i don't say we all agree we also agree a lot of us that these things, whatever they are, were, have been here for way longer than we have. They didn't just start popping up in 1947 or 40, whatever Roswell was. That just didn't start happening. It's when we really started to become aware of it, pay attention to it. And, and even if you look at Grush's reports in the 30s in Italy and things, and then, you know, documentation of things that have happened in, in ancient times with what the, they thought these things were. So there are certain reports that say that these things have been around for way longer than human existence. Now, if that is indeed the case, then who is to say, or who is not, that whatever this 3i atlas was, is, this ain't the first time that this happened. Maybe something similar to 3i atlas came way before we were around, 
came here, plopped down a whole bunch of things. If you listen to Tim Burchett, Tim Gallaudet, other people said, all right, our base is going to be in the water of this planet. We're going. This is where we're going to be able to put our tech. This is where we're going to be able to do everything. We're going to observe how this planet works. And they, again, this is all hypothetical, putting things together. Who knows? You never, you never know type stuff. But what if this is round two, round five, round ten, and this time we just happen to be here when the thing lands? Um, or it could be a comet that flies right by the planet, and it's nothing. Again, as I said in the beginning, I'm leaning towards that. I'm leaning towards by the time we start to see it, and this is the unfortunate part if that is that scenario. If it turns out to be just a very interesting comet, in general, that just did things that maybe defied what we are normally used to when it comes to comets. People will study it and go, oh, well, it did this. We were able to look at it, we were able to track it. We know what it was. It was very interesting, and it threw everybody off. But what that does is say, like, oh, here you go. The people are just, just wanting so bad for life at other places, just jumping into it. NASA goes, see, we told you so. We knew what it was. And those people that that were saying, guys, this is just a comet. It's moving like a comet. It's moving differently. You, you got to stop with the, the alien life stuff. And I think it will. And even though Avi Loeb has not said this is 100% what this is, he's certainly hinting that. He gives it more of like a probability type thing. So, you know, it's very interesting in the way that it's not moving differently. So it could be this. But it certainly seems as if he's leading the charge that this is something else. Um, does his credibility get hit if it isn't? I don't know. Should it? <sighs> Maybe. Maybe. Because it's just, I, I, again, maybe. Maybe. It's because he's the way he's presenting himself in general and saying the probabilities and things of that nature. He it won't be hit, and people will just say, "Oh, that's the guy that thought Three Eye Atlas was a was a spaceship, and it was just a comet that put, passed by." But so it's going to look pretty damn brilliant if this is the change of it all. The other question is, in the way that we talk about disclosure and other things in, uh, on this planet, if this turns out to be one of those things where, like, once you get enough. Once it gets around the sun and it gets into a place where you can now tell exactly what it is, that that what we have, our technology might not be that advanced, but it's advanced enough that once it gets into a certain range, we'll know if it's a comet or not. If it isn't, and it comes and we're looking around saying, okay, um, we should now, as human beings, try to figure out, can we all get together for a little bit, find out what this thing is, and actually try to remember Independence Day. Now, I don't know if it's going to be that kind of scenario. You remember what, um, oh, it was Stephen Hawking who had said that if there was a visit from interstellar beings, that it would not be peaceful. Now, what does he know? I don't know. He's just one of the smartest guys to ever live, but that doesn't necessarily mean he'd be, he'd be right. And then there's other people who say that these things will very much be benevolent. Or it could be a comet that just passes right by the Earth. And that's where we're at right now. But it is fascinating nonetheless. Three Eye Atlas. I mean, it is, it is it is something, every time there's a story about it, I want to talk about it because it is fascinating. And thinking about the idea of like, are there answers connected to the things that we're seeing in the skies and this thing? Uh, right now, I would probably say no. But as I said, two, I think it was two years ago when that Miami Mall story hit, I will never again say definitively, no, that's not what that is. That's not what that is. You can give my opinion. I don't think. I'm, I, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't, from what I see, I don't think so. But definitively, I will not say that. Because in the same way that definitively Avi Loeb isn't saying that. He's just hinting at it pretty strongly. What do you guys think the 3i Atlas is? 
What do you think it is for real? Do you think it's just a comet that's going to fly right by us? Nothing. Just an extraordinary thing that we will be scientifically something to be studied. Or is it something else? Put your thoughts in there. Let me know what you think. Thanks for joining us here on the show. As always, I appreciate it. Comment, click like, subscribe, do all that. And hey, Cornbread Hemp. I talked to you about them beforehand. I've been talking about them all week. Sign up. It, it, they're chill. Good night's sleep the other day with Cornbread Hemp.